Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, another live stream from our family workshop. Hopefully it'll be interesting again, hopefully it'll be useful. Just checking everything's working. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, everything seems okay there. So, uh, you may notice we have a little carving on the bench and we have some sandpaper and some wood. And this was sent to us by one of yourselves. It was sent to us by the carver. Big thank you for sending us this. We spoke about it in one of our live streams. What he was referred to as sour wood and if we'd carved it before. Now I'm hoping the carver will join us today and perhaps can explain a little bit more about the wood to everybody. Um, but this this is sour wood then sent to us from the US. Really grateful for it. And the other one then, I'm going to have to show you that one in terms of, because I've already used it, I've turned it into this so far. I think this was referred to as dogwood. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And what I've actually done then, see I've taken the some of the sour wood and I've made the basis of what I'm going to be working on today. A few different love spoons, some of our popular designs basically. So I'm going to demonstrate carving these. Uh, this little carving then, this was sent to us by the carver and this is our logo. And I've carved it myself a few times, but not as well as the carver has done here. So this is now probably going to be uh, used by us at different times you'll see it in, in our video. Oh, we've got somebody joining us. Oh good, it's yourself. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Oh well, we're very grateful for the wood that you sent us and we're, we're really grateful, um, yeah, to, to have the opportunity to, to work it. And thank you for, for clearing up that it, it is what we, we said it is, dogwood. So yeah, there's your little carving there. Beautiful, better than, uh, better than what we've ever done ourselves. What I really loved about this, and this is what is fantastic, when yourselves, when you share with us, um, it, it, it really does make things more interesting because what I loved on this is the little bit of detail that you put on it. These little lines and things like that, really nice. And I love the, the depth that you've got on it and the, and the finishes as well. It's got a bit dusty because it's on the bench. So I'll have to put a little bit of oil to, to, to just get clean it up a little bit there. That's, that's our fault it is. But yeah, really nice piece of carving. Uh, yeah, re really impressed with it. So what I thought I would start off, I haven't carved this yet. Dad had a bit of a play around with it. Um, I'll bring, I'll bring you in. Thomas the Woodcarver, are you, are you there? He's on his way. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about this. You, you've, you've had a little bit of a play around with this wood, haven't you? Fascinating uh, timber. Because yeah. the carver's joined us. Because we're, we're in the process as well. We're going to put a few things together. Oh, thank you very um, much. Yeah, it's we're, we're really grateful for that. We're going to put a few things together to, to sort out for, for sending you. Um, so we, we're not going to say what we're going to put in there. We keep it a surprise for you. So there will be a parcel on its way from West Wales. Uh, but this one, this is the sour wood. And the first instinct for, for myself, well, the first thing I want to know, why is it referred to as sour wood? I'll put that to the carver. Do you know why they refer to this wood as what, sour what wood? Tree, what tree is it? Yeah? Well, look, it reminds me, you mentioned things like satin walnuts. Yeah. But it reminds me of, of a fruit or a nut. I'd be honest, both, both different woods do remind me of something like that. But I'd love to know, why is it called sour woods? We're going to just start start to see me working on now, just working on the bowl, and it is it's lovely it's lovely wood for for working in. I wondered with the name sour wood, is it the could it be something like the smell? I don't know. I know it's a distinctive smell. Who we got with us? Hello, Tommy. Great to have you with us as well. That's what we're focusing on today is some of the wood that's been sent to us by the carver. Anybody interested as well, um, you'll have to put your details on there because I know I've been looking through the carver's work on Instagram. So for everybody else, if you want to see the carver's work, done some beautiful woodwork, 
and, and some really lovely carvings. So if you want to see them, you'll have to put your Instagram name on there so everybody can have a little look at some of some of your work because it is, it's, it's well worth a little look and it's always interesting to see what others are doing. Yeah, what, what, what was your impression of it then when, when you carved it? It's lovely to work. And the dogwood, you found it similar to... Which was the dogwood now? This one here, the harder of the two. Yeah, what did I you mentioned a few different ones. Did you mention something like a hickory? Oh, a hickory, yeah. But it's really interesting for ourselves yeah. to work in different woods. And um, what'll be interesting with it, it'll be interesting to see how they come up. Initially, my own thoughts on it initially, when, when, I, uh, when I cut these out on the scroll saw, you'll see just in there in the bowl, the machines found this one a little bit more challenging. I had to have a new scroll saw blade to bring it up to a nice finish because if I didn't have a brand new uh, blade, then it would have um, it would have caused it to burn a little bit. There's not just a few comments there, so uh, I don't know from the experience that I look at. Yeah, we'll have to find out sour taste. Yeah, possibly. Um, but it's it is it's interesting where. When when we were working with that on the scroll saw, I've actually managed to go and what break. Is the name of the tree, though? Well, that's that's the interesting thing. As we're saying, I have to have a, a look at it because um, not one hundred percent for me. It reminds me of some of the different fruit woods and possibly a fruit or a nut. That's that sort of that's the from you know from the carving for for, for getting the comparison for how it carves. It reminds me of some of the fruit woods that that we have through, um, because we we're lucky we get wood in. Whilst we mentioned that we you know we we source our wood from recycling it, so we get it from old furniture and things like that. We do have our local tree surgeon. He brings us in timber at different times, and. It, it reminds you of some of the things that Danny brings us in. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder whether, I can see when I'm, as I'm carving it now, I can see where dad is coming from as well with the, with the idea of a satin walnut yeah. as you're cutting into it. But it's lovely this for, for carving. It seems to have the yeah. characteristics. I'll have a little look at the grain. Look, an apple look as well. That apple as well. Yeah. And it's funny because this one here, similar, Remind, reminds me of, of, a, of a fruit wood. I think we've got a, a few comments on there. Do you want to have a quick check for me, dude? So you can see what we're doing. We're working on the treble clef, and so we're just doing those stop cuts. This is a, a popular design that we do. We refer to it as love song. So the uh, idea of music is nice on life's journey. I'm a wood burning warrior. Mm. I can't stay long. I have a leukemia doctor appointment, but it's nice to see you all. <laughs> ah, thank you for joining us. Hope everything goes well. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good. To, it, we're very grateful that you all join us. So you can see what we're doing is is we're building up those stop cuts to to work from. Yeah, all the very best to the uh, the wood burning warrior with everything. Uh, um, we use those stop cuts then as a barrier, and so we just work into the edge where we've cut, um, and just add a little bit of depth to the work that we're doing. So just working round the bottom of the treble clef, and so far, this piece of wood, it is, it's, it is really nice to carve. What will be interesting will be the comparison when it comes to working with the other wood. So that'll be very interesting to see how much of a difference between the two there actually is. Because right. physically, this particular wood its characteristics, it seems a lot softer and a lot more forgiving than this one here. Yeah. Um, have you spotted something? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that um, you look at the 
the depth of the bark. Yeah. It's quite a thick. It's well, quite a thick bark. That's an interesting. I know where you're coming from now. Yeah. That it's quite a thick bark for the size of the tree, isn't it? Yeah. So it's quite a quite well protected by that bark, considering. What about the growth lines? It's always fascinating with woods. How many years growth are we working out roughly on that particular piece? Because it seems quite close grain for working in. Yeah, I mean, it can't be that much because we got one, one two. So Thomas the woodcarver's just running his eye over the different logs. Is it about so what would you say, 20 years growth on it? Oh, 20 years of growth. That's there we a, are. That's about it. I tell you, the other thing we might have got as well is the cork tree. Right. You know, because it's got the cork tree, you see, that grows in cycles of, um, and I forget how many years now, and they, they use the um, the bark. The bark for the, the corks. For the corks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Grows, so, so obviously... Well, that's uh, why, this you, is you, why... You, you put your nail in, in, in there, that's and quite, that's, it's that's quite, like... The bark is quite sort of... It is soft, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite soft there. I noticed that because on the one design, this one here, I was right up to the edge. You can see just clipping the bark there. And I was conscious that I wanted to get all the bark out because I, I, was, I was concerned that the bark was quite yeah. soft. Um, it's fascinating though. This is the beauty of wood carving and working with wood. It's such a, a huge, broad okay, subject. It, um... yeah. It's such a big, broad so sort of subject. Far that... more forgiving than dogwood. Yeah. It can give you very satisfying burnishing cuts. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 one of those things where um, when when you're working with wood, having the chance to work with something different, that for for us. It's, it's sort of quite exciting, isn't it? it, it's, it, it, it it's what keeps your, your interest, and it's why then woodwork, there's always something new, there's always something to learn, there's always something to try. I mean, when we were looking at these logs, when we started processing them, the one thing you have to just be conscious of is the, the pith, because you've got that scent of the logs. Yeah. You always... We, when we process it then, we're always conscious of the pith right in the center of the log. So we work it out how we can get the best when we're cutting it, how we can get the most out of uh, the, the, the log itself. So we're just working on those stop cuts. But yeah, well, as I said, we're very grateful to the, the, nice uh, thing about the carver. As well, you've, got, you've got two distinctive colors. You've got the heartwood that's um, a little a paler, darker. isn't it? Oh, the heartwood, sorry. I'm thinking sapwood, yeah. That was a darker... Darker um, shade. And the sapwood... The sapwood then is, is nice, sort of creamy, yeah. white. And that's um, nice in the finishing. You get that contrast. Spoons, that's, that's nice, yeah. We use woods a lot with contrast. So over the years, we've used things like you and Laburnum. You'll have seen on our channel, we're big fans of the, uh, the juniper. That is one of our favourites. You get some distinctive, even things like the oak you'll get quite distinctive colors. And the, the walnut as well. So you see, we're just building up those shapes there. And we're just gonna use those stop cuts. Yeah, so this is part of where we've um, had our YouTube channel. This is part of where it's been fantastic, is when when it, yourselves, when you sort of get involved, it it really does add an extra element because it just opens our eyes up to to new things, learning new things and and seeing as well what you're doing is is fascinating because it hopefully what we do gives you ideas and helps you but also then when we see what you're doing as well it helps us out and it gives us ideas so it's a bit of a, a building community but this was a real treat, a real surprise last week when we uh, when we had all this beautiful wood through. You also see that as well we had the, oh that's the wrong piece. There was a piece of sandpaper as well, you sent some sandpaper, which again we'll be using that sandpaper. 
and that though we'll we'll be using that in the finishing because it's finer that one it's on it's around here somewhere it's finer sandpaper than we we would normally use ourselves so it would be Your interesting came to see in to help us tidy this today so we can't find anything so we now we can't find anything now but it is tidier much tidier that's our one thing we've got a few different videos coming up one is to do with the project mistakes we always make and one of our things that we always make mostly is a, is around organization that's our biggest issue is always organizing ourselves because it's a lot more fun working on the projects and making things and working with the wood than sorting ourselves out and getting organized so this design then it has sort of contemporary hearts and the main feature is the treble clef and it's popular this one for different occasions but as you can imagine it's most popular for people who have people and couples who, who have an interest in in music so let's just get that we're just tidying up the the point of the heart and we're just creating what we're trying to do is to create that effect where the the piece going down the middle there of the treble clef that runs behind the sort of swirl at the front if that's what you can call it we've got thomas woodcarver running around now trying to find the where we put our sandpaper yeah i certainly think that that one there that is a lovely wood to carve ah there we are he's found it sandpaper. interestingly with this um, I haven't come across, I'm not familiar with that, where you have the backing like that. The foam backing. Like a foam backing. I haven't come across, have you come across that before? No. 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 So that's new to us, that is. We haven't come across like that There's foam backing. Merker so. is, uh, I've come across Merker. Merker before, yeah. yeah. Just move that one out of the way two seconds. Now you'll notice that these gouges then that we're working in, the one that I'm doing that cut in, and the one that I've done a lot of the work in, these two here, they, they're very, very similar. They do a similar job. But instinctively, I prefer to use the one or the other depending on the type of cut I get the that, I am, that I'm doing. Do you want the shellac, don't you? Yes, please, you want the shellac. And so just a, a good example for how a lot, a lot of carving and stuff like that, a lot of it is sort of done by instinct and feel. Um, one comment as well we had on one of our videos just today, earlier on today, somebody asking about a good carving for starting off, and the one we always recommend, whilst we suggest love spoons, because a lot of the carving skills are included, the little carving that we suggest for absolute beginners is um, to carve a simple five-petaled flower. So that's the one for anybody who might see this and is absolutely at the start of their wood carving journey. Yeah, we do a five petaled flower and that's, that's the one that I learned to carve. That's the one that dad's used over the years for teaching others. Is a five petaled flower. So the same as we always do. These logs, as you can see, perfect for what we do because they've got a nice vertical grain in them. So we've got our vertical grain, which is perfect for doing love spoons from. So that grain runs vertically, as opposed to horizontally, where more difficult for us to carve. And also, you'll increase the risk of breaking the spoon, especially on the neck of it, because the, the grain is running across which means that it's got less strength naturally so the same for this one we just work on our stop cuts for our heart here and when it comes then to the finishing as we've always same process as we use as always with the three coats of shellac sanding sealer that is where this will come in useful because it's a p400 bit higher than what we would um, normally use because we we usually go one less sort of 320s 240s that sort of thing 
But we, again, we've been playing around with different methods of finishing because we are now using three coats of shellac sanding sealer and then afterwards we use um, linseed oil mixed with beeswax. And we are finding that it is bringing things up to just a, a bit, a step up in terms of a finer finish. Now the last week, uh, we've been busy because we asked yourselves uh, for a little bit of input on videos that you would like to see. As we always say, good opportunity in the live stream, get any ideas, get any thoughts in on what you would like, like to see from us. It's great to have your input. But one thing that came up, a few people said, yeah, you'd love to see that. And that is the making of uh, a doll's house. I'll ask Dad when he comes back in with the shellac. Uh, we, we've actually done it. We've managed to film it all. It was a few days, because it's been a few years, probably 20 years plus, since we made our last doll's house. So we were sort of uh, trying to remember certain processes as we were going along, but we have managed to do it. And it's a, a sort of Welsh cottage theme. And that will be coming up now, so we're working on uh, editing that all together for you all to see. So hopefully that'll be interesting. As we say though, any requests, if you've got any specific things, specific areas that you would like us to focus on, let us know and uh, we'll have a look for you. We always do our best to do things that we hope are interesting and useful to everyone. Right, so we're well on our way with this treble clef. We've got a bit of work at the top of the spoon to go. And so far, all in all, this is a lovely piece of wood. Really nice piece of wood to work in. As For me, I, I do find it in the realms of sort of the fruit woods and things like that. Um, Shellac's going behind you there, right? Shellac's going behind us, brilliant. As well. I was just explaining to everyone we've been working on a doll's house. We've managed to complete it. Yeah. How did you find? I got to ask because it's Thomas the Woodcarver who, who oh. made that. How did you find it making a, a doll's house after twenty years? Forgotten how much work it was, is it? Well, I actually looked to see when. Um... Well, there's a bit of a story behind it. Do you want to explain the story? With there's a story of Princess Diana, isn't there? Or do you want to save that for the video? No, we can we'll explain, explain yeah. Because different people will see the video, and um, it, it's very interesting. The it was nineteen eighty eight, I think. Right. And um, so I would have been. I was six at the time. Yeah. So I, I have to confirm that, but I, I'm pretty sure it was nineteen eighty eight. And the Wales at the time they had the Welsh Crafts Council. And wow. Um, that's, I, I, I've never, I've never actually no, heard I, of that organisation. So it, it was, shows, shows that it was a long time ago. Yeah. And we were asked by the Welsh Craft Council. There were, there were, I think there were a lot more um, small crafts in Wales during the, uh, you know, the eighties and the nineties. Um, it, it was very popular, you know, craft work of all kinds. Well, just here we had a we had a glass blower, we had a pottery. Yeah, just in just this in area. this area. There was a leather maker. There was a whole craft village at one yeah. time that the council yeah. ran, wasn't yeah, it? Lots of different um, potteries, um, uh, Stony Park woolen weavers. Leather. Um, there was a leather one, yeah, wasn't it? Nokia's leather. So the we had a request from the Welsh. Crafts Council, Lady Diana was um, visiting Newtown in Mid Wales and um, she was going to the Laura Ashley uh, factory. I'm thinking that's gone, is it? Laura Ashley? Laura Ashley, yeah. I mean, uh, that, that was quite sort of. That was big, big wasn't it? Yeah. Very popular uh, Laura Ashley fabrics and that. It was fairly recently Laura Ashley's gone, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Shame. we were asked. Uh, we knew that uh, she would be visiting, Lady Diana would be visiting Newtown and um, one of the visits then was to, um, uh, well, what the request was, um, could we, did we have any toys 
that um, could be put in a display and she would be viewing them with a possibility of purchasing. <laughs> uh, so you you and, did the, uh, the doll's house and sent it up? We, we sent the doll's house. So we, we, we still, we kept that particular doll's house because it was viewed by her. And um, that's what we've been... Uh, that's what we've been recreating. ...working on in the last week. Yeah. But it's interesting because... Um, it just shows that you, when you, you know, we were making it, and I, I don't know, I, I, are you going to sort of show the house today, or, um... We can do, because, we can do. Um, there are what I call a number of improvements, then, that I was able to look at it from a slightly well, different point of view. Well, one, one thing, we weren't looking at it, we're not <laughs> looking at it as a sort of commercial thing. Have you got any more? It's um yeah we we weren't looking at it specifically from a selling point of view no. initially no and what we one of the things we used to, we used to sell it, it was, we used um, to sell it, it that's it right was, it was a very popular one but there there we'll explain it through the video there were lots of little bits just little almost hidden little bits really that you know make it easier to make or make it just work I don't know how do you explain. Um, the design, there are very cl little clever little bits you put in the design, I would say. Yeah, we, you know, it, it was, I was able to look at it without having to um, <laughs> think about the time, so I just spent a bit of time redesigning it, really. That's right. We made, what it is, we just adapted the roof and things like that to mean that you don't need certain bits of equipment that we've got access to. And because we know that somebody else wants to possibly copy it and make it, yeah. we tried to, we make, try to make it so a, a little bit easier, easier then. If yeah. you, you know, if you haven't got the same machinery as us, yeah, then, then it's a, uh, you can still make it. it. It would have been difficult to have made it because the particular machine that we have is a coronet it's, it's saw, about 50 years old at least. and you won't see them any longer. Yeah, so a beautiful, um, worth having a little look online at the coronet saw if you can find any information on it because it's a lovely, it's a lovely sort of circular blade saw, isn't it? Yeah. But nice, nice piece of equipment to work with. And it's, it's quite an accurate machine as well. Yeah, it is. And so. Um, yeah, you can make tiny little adjustments of yeah. the of the rail, can't you? That that make a, a big difference. Yeah, it, it, was, it was nice to make it again. Yeah. Um, Possibly one that you didn't think you'd ever make again, really, was it? No. Because it's uh, a long time since we've made one. It was more difficult, though, because uh, you were filming it. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you so can't... I, we had to wait until... Well, because one thing, we're always sort of trying our best to think about when we're, when we're filming, we're always trying to think of angles and stuff like that because the problem is, like if I'm carving like that, all you can see is, is my hand. So we do our best to pick camera angles that you'll be able to see the most possible. So it isn't straightforward always filming and, and making something at the same time. Um, yeah, one thing as well that may made a, a little difference with it is when we would have been working and making the originals, you would have had to have used the coping saw for yeah. the internal cuts as now with the um, with the scroll saw that certainly makes life a little bit easier for us, doesn't it? Yeah. So the, the windows and the doors, those finer cuts are a little bit more straightforward. And back in the 80s, doll houses uh, big I thing. were very popular in America. I don't yeah. know whether they still are. We were looking around online and you couldn't find a huge amount of information no, about all the dolls' houses. No, but, uh, I remember, the, uh, especially Christmas time, I think, uh, in America, they, they go to town on the uh, decorations. They had beautiful, know. beautiful, yeah, some beautiful examples that we... Yeah. Remember, us, we used to see them in like the magazines and yeah. hobby craft and things like yeah. that. Some of the, the doll houses that were doing, you know, being done in the US. Beautiful. Ours is a little bit more, a little bit more simple because it's a Welsh cottage, isn't it? But well, it's, it's based on the cottage that we have across the road, which would uh, be a few, clom. a few hundred years old. It's what we call a clom, clom cottage. cottage. 
made up of um we're going we're going to go down the line of we're go, going down the line again of, of history trivia and we with the clom cottage the 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 story always was if you could build the chimney stack in a day you could have the land for your yeah. home and that's what what did they call it was it no, it wasn't a teeny was it it was it was, it was the overnight yeah it was a special name so that's what would happen. As long as they could build the chimney stack, they could have the plot of land and uh, use it. There we go. Now that's our first carve in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give that one on to Dad. So you can see, I, I'm, I keep seeing that. There's a tiny, it's, it's this particular design, what happens. I can just see there's a tiny little, I may change the gouge. That would help. Just where the, the direction of the grain, where I've been cutting in the one direction, it's just where the two directions meet. Let's see, is that tidied up now? Yes. So I'm gonna hand that one on to Dad, he's gonna shellac that, and now we're gonna see how we get on carving this one here. You haven't done the back. I haven't done the back. So Dad's gonna carve the back, and I'm gonna carve this one here. So again, I'll start off on the bowl. I'll demonstrate on that. I, this is what I quite often do when I'm carving a new piece of wood. Start off on the bowl, and do you know this one really does remind me straight away as I'm carving it. It reminds me of certain types of apple that we have. It really, it really does. Um, I've had, and this is the thing. Sometimes we there are other woods that we've been given. I've carved things, whilst the other one reminds me. There's, with both of these woods, for, for, for myself then, there's something very, very familiar about them. And I wonder whether we refer to them. I know it isn't, but it also reminds me now, calm in the back here, of the eucalyptus. Right, <laughs> yeah. I know it isn't that, but... Uh... It's funny where, I think it's the universal language of um, working in wood, isn't it? Because there's, there's certainly, familiarities with with this one here I can think of a few occasions over the years where we've had wood similar that I think we uh, we've carved so um, yeah this one here it it's gonna be it's gonna be physically more demanding than carving the other one but it's well we got we got my wife in here now you say hello Yali Hola. there we are that's just, Yelly's just come in two minutes into the workshop. Um, yeah, there's something, again, familiar. It's, it's a physically harder wood, this one. But I think, again, it's going to carve quite nicely. For any of you who are learning carving, then, this is, for ourselves, a big part of, of what it's all about, then. The wood itself is so fascinating because you have so many different types of wood and they all have their own characteristics. And they all have, well, how can you put it? Strengths and weaknesses? Yeah. And they, they all have more, more than strength and weaknesses, characteristics that make them distinctive. And it's not to say, oh, one is better than the other or anything like that. No, it's, it's they're all, they're all, they have a unique way about them. And what we find as well, you'll have two pieces of wood from the same tree even, and they will behave differently and carve differently. In terms of, now this is where it gets interesting. So we're gonna to have to take slow, steady cuts. I would be more nervous in terms of working with the mallet on this one than on the other one, because the other one for me seems a bit more forgiving. As with this one, I think you would reach that point where the mallet would split it more easily. Right. So this is one to go a little bit more steadily on. The other thing it is showing up as well is that that gouge, there's obviously a tiny, tiny feather edge nick because it's showing that in the carving. So a nice, It'll be a nice finish that we'll get on this one. And it will it's carving pretty well, but it is certainly a little bit more of a challenge for us than the other one. 
but a perfectly acceptable piece of wood for how it carves. Yeah, we can just see there's just a tiny little... So that gouge will have to go in. What happens, you get a little bit of grit or something like that. We'll see, we'll check the cleanness of this gouge. Yeah, this one is taking that mark away. So we've got a cleaner finish on it. Just like so. So it's the same processes we'd always use in. We do those stop cuts, cutting down into the woods. And then we use that stop cut as a barrier and on an angle then, just cutting out, just to give us a little bit of detail. And the idea is with the love spoon then, with this design, you're bringing out those heart shapes. There we go, and we just take a little bit of extra wood. So that's the first, first part on there. So if we were working in this one on a, a regular basis, you would be uh, you would be producing a little bit less because you you have to take things a little bit more steadily. Let's have a little look what we love on there. Dogwood is when I said it's the carb if you felt like testing your patience. <laughs> oh, it's it's a it's a it's a good it is it's a good test, but it's uh, it's carving nicely. It'll it's um, for me there is something quite familiar about this. And I think we've had similar wood brought to us by our local tree surgeon. So I would be fascinated because I, I haven't come across the term, I haven't come across the name dogwood before. No. So I would be interested to know, have we got another name for it locally? I'm going to ask Dad, do you want to have a little test of this one or? Um... Yeah, I wouldn't mind then. Yeah, because we've only got the one piece of this one. Right, I'm going to do some shellacking on this one now. I've cleaned the back up. Brilliant. So we've got that one. So we've done the bottom cuts on our hearts. Just like so. It is certainly physically more demanding than our sour wood there. Can I show it being No, we'll show the final. Oh, wow. Finish. Ah, yeah, great. Yeah, nice. So we're just doing that stop cut, just like so. And another one just a little bit further in. This is a, it's a quite a sort of pure carving wood, really, this one. But because it is a little bit, it's in terms of hardness, it's similar for ourselves and some of the maple that we get. And Another wood I, I carved similar to this one is pear. Pear, yeah. Yeah, pear. You can, can it, it's, it's interesting because as, as we go along, can you see why I was saying about the similarities with the fruit and nut trees? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of the, our woods, for instance, what you call in... The, is known a lot in the US as basswood. We label all of those woods as, as lime, flower in lime we call those. And I know there's, there is a difference in terms of if you're in the US, there's a, you, you have a difference, but for ourselves, it's the same. We call oak, oak, and the Spanish, they got two names for it, roble and encina. We just have the one name where we call everything oak. And it, things like the fruit woods, we have fruit versions and flowering versions. And that's what the, some of these woods are reminding me of. I'm going to bring Dad in. Do you want to have a, do you want to have a couple of cuts just so you, because we've only got the one. I nearly finished the We've time. only got the one piece of this. So I want Dad to have a little, a little play with it just to get a second opinion or a, a third opinion because we've also got the carver. What I would also do is, if I was working with this regularly, I would probably choose slightly more simple designs for making in this wood than making in the other wood. So the dogwood, I would choose slightly more simple designs. So we would definitely use both woods 
but I would choose slightly more simple designs for this one because it's it's got a few extra demands when it comes to the actual carving. So again, I'll do these stop cuts and then I'll put it across to Dad. He'll come in and he'll just have a little go because there is something very familiar about this wood. I would be very cautious with this one myself, as I mentioned. The mallet, I think, would be too much for it. It's got that hard hardness about it, but quite often when you have a timber that's got hardness, they have a brittle side to them. Yeah. And it's in that realm for my liking. So you just finish that one off. And then I'll let you come in and Dad will do a couple of cuts and we'll get a, another opinion on this one. That, that other gouge definitely needs sharpening because it's this one is cleaning up the lines that the other one was leaving. So you see we use the same processes, using the stop cuts, cutting down, shaping as we go, beveling edges. And my own feeling is that I have carved this wood before, but I know it by another name and I can't see what. Oh dear. Ah, there you go. Comedian Cherry in Europe. Yeah, I think we call that one, I think we call it Flowering Cherry or something like that. Either fruit or flowering cherry. You'll have to let us know. Does it, does it bear fruit, that one? If it bears fruit, then it's the fruit cherry. Um, but we have, that's what we refer to a lot of it, is uh, fruit and flowering. Bit harder this one, isn't it? Yeah. This is something that we love though. Trying different woods, trying different designs, trying different styles. That's why we do the scroll sawing and the wood carving. There's so many wood as a material. It's such a nice material. There's so many different things that you can do with it. I am now reaching for the mallet. You're reaching the mallet. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. No, that's fine. No, I, I would be nervous myself working with the mallet because... I understand what you're saying. It's a little... Because it's 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 harder, but it's got there's a brittleness there that I can feel in it. I'm going very gently, Dave. Yeah. But this is where, see, Dad, Thomas the Woodcarver, tends to go a little bit more steadily at things than myself. I tend to be a little bit more heavy-handed. I reckon that's that's what we're we're talking about with that one is is a is a what we would refer to as a, one of the variations of cherry. Oh, it, cherry sometimes can be really hard. It would also that. explain why on the saws it would also explain why the machines didn't weren't weren't keen because cherry has that tendency yeah. to burn. It's not a big problem. I tell you, all you do. I don't know whether you, you had like what I call a marzipan smell sometimes with yeah. it, uh, like an almondy smell yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, there was a distinct. So if there was smell, that, there was on both woods. There was a very distinctive smell. Am I still on, on the camera? Then I don't know whether yeah, it's uh, showing there. up on the camera. I know you said this was. It's got a tiny feather edge on that one. Now, this, hopefully, this will be interesting and useful to you all as well because myself and Dad we have different styles of carving. For instance, Dad, now he's sitting to carve. He wouldn't normally sit to carve. He'd normally stand to carve. But it's always useful to see how different people have different ways of doing it, have different approaches uh, with the carving. When it comes to learning carving, because a lot of what we do, that's what it's geared towards, is helping, helping others learn and helping you, you know, develop your carving you've got to find what suits you as an individual. So you will see others using different techniques and you've just got to find what suits you best, your style, the type of carving that you're doing and you as an individual. Because growing up around the workshop, the style that I adopted for carving is quite different to dance. Yeah. All I'm doing now is just taking the sharp, sharp edges, edges off, off it. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. It's an ideal timber for yourself, Dave, because you've got much more push than I have. So, it, it yeah, it's it's a I, I the other timber is 
a little easier for carving, but I, I'm certainly, yeah, I'm certainly comfortable working in that in that particular wood. Yeah, it's good fun. One thing you would need as well. Another thing, if you're working with a wood like this, you've got to have some really good gouges. Yeah, we got some nice vintage ones, and that does make that does make a difference. Uh, not a fruit. Yeah, there we are. We call it. Um, yeah, yeah. I I know exactly now. The carver explained in there. There's no fruit on it, but it has a very pretty flower. We I reckon this is the the flowering cherry. Flower and cherry. Yeah. What we, yeah. That's yeah, what we yeah. call it. Yeah. Lovely are. stuff. Here we are. Here we are. Finish, Very nice, yeah. We will finish yeah. that one off and shellac it. Yeah, especially you now when it's shellac, it'll be interesting. Because I shellac the other one and that's come up quite nicely on the first coat. Yeah, you, um, this one here, people used to have a lot of, you used to see a lot of the, the cherry trees in, in people's gardens and stuff, didn't you? Yeah. But it's, you don't see as many of the cherry trees any longer. And it's, it certainly explains certain things that when we were working with this, for instance, on the, um, on the scroll saw, initially I had a, a slightly worn blade and it was having a few issues in terms of burning it. And as soon as we changed the blade, it was absolutely fine. But yeah, definitely characteristics of, of fruit wood. This is, as we've said a few times, a fascinating part. You know, the mahoganies, there are so many different varieties. I also think as well that uh, it depends on what soil is, you know. It... Well, sort of experience would tell us, you know, because we, we have people who've done woodwork in and they, they talk about, you know, they'll, you'll hear almost blanket statements won't you or a yeah. particular wood behaves in a certain way and you always find there's always an exception to yeah. the rule when it comes to wood it depends where where it's grown how the, it's grown the tree, for instance the oak trees in this area the nearer the coast they're they're always the grain is at an angle they're yeah. perfected by the wind and so they there you can you can see the um how can I explain it? Well, all the trees, you'll see as you drive around the coast here, all the trees, they're all at an angle. Yeah. And so when the, that affects then the grain and working with them, our oak locally is what we refer to as much more wild, isn't it? It's yeah. The grain is going in more different directions and it's a bit more challenging to, yeah. to, to carve as the, the oak then that we'll have in... Because we, we, at different times we see the American oak, we see European oak, we see English oak. And that is tends to be a bit more sort of straight grain yeah. as a general rule. But again, you'll always have exceptions. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of different things that affect the nature and texture of the wood. Yeah, absolutely. And I would, I would imagine it's... It's a bit like people, isn't it? Different trees grow under different circumstances. Some are under more stress as they're growing than others. Because the rosewood, that's an interesting one, isn't it? You get a, the rosewood, you get some beautiful grain. And there's different stories about how that happens, isn't it? How they get that yeah. effect, whether it's natural or whether they do stuff to the tree. Years ago, I remember somebody in the workshop telling us that they would actually beat the sapling. Yeah. I don't know if yeah, that's true. Would, as it was growing, so they beat it with a stick. And that's to get... Bruise then, bruised yeah. it, so it would, it would create this incredible effect. So all I'm doing now, we're just shaping the edges. Just rounding, rounding everything off. Just taking any sharpness out of the design and it's where dad has just started going over these edges we're just going a little bit deeper we have two when we sell don't we on the internet we have two different um yeah we have lots of emails people asking us we offer two different carving styles one we refer to as traditional and the other we refer to as minimalist 
and it refers to the depth and the detail that we put on the love spoon. And a lot of people ask us what is the difference between traditional and minimalist carving. The truthful answer is one's carved by dad and the other's carved by me. But it's, it, it's basically because we have two different distinctive styles of carving, we, we differenti differentiate between the two um, in, ter in terms of, of, how, of how it looks of, of the actual finish. I'm the minimalist one, it's, you're the traditional one. It's basically that I, I hit things a bit harder and push a bit more than... Uh, I've actually got another word for my uh, own style of carving. Oh, right, we're going to have to change the word in. No, I don't think it would be right. Oh, right. Because it's lazy. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's just a natural... When I was learning to carve, I remember you, you used to... You used to point it out to me. Dad would see me carving and he would say to me, you say, you don't have to go that deep. Why are you going that, you'd, you'd, yeah. you'd say it to me, why are you going that deep? And I, yeah, and I'd look at him. Block, what it is, I'm not going to go oh, like, I'm not, I'm not no. Okay. And what it, so dad would see it and he would see the depth that I was carving at and think that I was sort of doing it, doing extra work. <laughs> um, Unnecessary. Unnecessarily, but it, it was just natural. I was just carving to the natural depth that fitted with myself. There we are. Right, I'm going to hand that one to Thomas Woodcarver again. If you want to put a coat of shellac on that, and I will just demonstrate a little bit of carving on this one. Well, I can put a shellac on it, but you haven't done the back yet. I haven't done the back. So do I do the back or do I just shellac it? I've dropped my block. Gonna... No, do the back. Yeah, do the back. Or... We got time. Yeah, I can demonstrate some of this. Well, I hope we oh, got no, time. That one. Okay, then. Right, that's yeah, fine. we'll have a little look at this one here. So this one is our the last one as that we show. We didn't we didn't tell you the name of that one. We refer to that as uh, Sueño del Amor, which is the Spanish for dreams of love or love's dream. So this is what we do. We give every spoon, every design part of the process of designing it and making it is is having a little bit of a story behind it. A name for it as well so that's what we do with the with our work and this one the name is entwined hearts because what we got we've got a twist below it a twist above it and the two hearts in between so the two twists are entwining those hearts together now that's interesting because I've come from working on that one there and I've come back to working on this wood it's more noticeable the hardness or the softness of this one, the more forgiving nature of this one. It's noticeable then going from the other one back to this one. You really do notice that this is that few steps more, more forgiving. And it's a nice... For sort of pure carving, this would be really nice. So if you're doing fine detail or this would be a, a lovely timber. If you were doing, if we were doing lettering, initials and stuff like that, I think this one's a really forgiving timber, lovely to work in. And with wood, we always think that if you've got a, an interesting piece of wood, like this one, you've got the, the, that contrast between the sap and the heartwood. You're at an advantage before you start because you've got interest, you've got character in the wood. So it just gives you that advantage as a carver. Right, so we go on and we work on the two hearts. These are two sort of more contemporary well, see, style hearts. What's also be interesting is the fact that they tend to say British timbers are a little bit um, insipid then. There's not much character and colour to them. Right. Uh, you know, and I, I think they get that from the fact that the lime hasn't got a lot of character. The sycamore hasn't got, you know, they are very light coloured timbers. I mean, even the oak. In comparison to uh, teak or mahogany, you see, it hasn't got a lot of colour, has it? Yeah. You know, so... Um, 
But it's interesting, some of our native timbers, it's, they are there, it's just you have to go searching for them a yeah, bit, doesn't it? Because you've got the U. Yeah. And then for instance, uh, they brought in the laburnum. That's a, that's a nice timber for... But it's not a native timber. But it's not a native timber, you're right, isn't it? Yeah. There's only a few native ones, aren't there? There's beech, lime, actual native hardwoods. Very, very few actually in, um, in the UK. I remember looking at the list from the Woodland Trust. Yeah. About 15, 16. Well, we, we buy from the Woodland Trust and uh, I think we mentioned it before, the three trees. We put the oak. Silver birch. Silver birch and the other horn one. Beam. Horn beam. that's the one. And you'd be pleased to know that those, they're, 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 some of those trees are starting to do really oh, well. They're thriving, they are, yeah. We were down there, we've been filming recently we're going to do another video because we haven't demonstrated for a while. I know we're demonstrating now, loves from carving, but we, we've got a, another video we're working on where we show from log, well, from tree planting to love spoon. So to give everybody a, a clear idea of the entire process that we undertake All for right, making gotta, the spoon. I've got to show this being chillaxed here. That's going to come up beautifully, isn't it? Yeah, I've got to show i got to show you that's so yeah, that is. Yeah, too fast. I don't want to drip it on your, um, I'll take this out take a little bit. Take that one out, yeah. Oh, look at that. So I'm thinking probably, probably a little dip there. You can see, what's the colour of the heart now when I, am I in picture now? Yeah, you're in. Look at that. Look at that. You can see the colour. And now you can really see his cherry. Yeah. So I'm thinking as well, with the finish on this, I'm thinking that carving, I'm asking the carver now, that carving there, that's done in the in the, in this particular timber, the, the the what you refer to as the dogwood, by the look of it. That's the same wood, isn't it? I mean, look at that now, that's cool. Look at that character. Yeah. I know that's a bit of the bark there, but... Uh, yeah. That's come up lovely. Those now. are some really beautiful timbers. That's why we love working in it. That's why we love working in wood. Because it's a lovely material. Oh, and this one, no, you watch this now, look. And look it at finishes beautifully. You can't beat it. For us, there's not a, there's no material that comes close to it, is there? It's very therapeutic. Yeah. And that's why it's great to share it. Anything as well, any ideas, anything you're working on? Yeah, that's the first. Have, get them into us. It's great to have, a, you know, a bit of a, a community and, and, and helping one another out. This has been fantastic. As I said, we're going to put a few things together and, and send it out as a little thank you because we, we have really enjoyed. That's got a little bit on there. He's complaining now because I got a bit in there. Like... Shellacking. But that's such a nice piece of wood that we got to get it. Uh, we got to get it just right. You know what happened, don't you, Dave? What's that? I put too much shellac on the brush. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. It's the, f it's the first coat though, you see, it doesn't matter for the first coat. It's not a, it's Get not away with issue. that. There we are, Dave, I'll move out of your way. There we are, I think uh, for this demo though, I think I will, whilst we've started this one, we've... Uh, yeah, yeah, you carry on with that. In, uh, this <laughs> is, I'm afraid this is a British reference, isn't it, for Mastermind. I've start I started so I'll finish. Yeah. That was uh, a quiz programme, and that was the catchphrase. I've started so I'll finish. So you can see, we just build up those, like a twist, like a Celtic weave. We're very lucky with the being here in Wales, because we can call on the Celtic designs, being a Celtic nation. Some of our favourite things to do. We're working on a love spoon at the moment that's been requested with the, the Celtic cross at Nevin. But it's, that is, I, I'm thinking now, I'm going to ask Dad, that you've used that, that's, that's very similar to the one that you use anyway, the, right. the Nevin Cross. So we, we've done for years and years, we've done Celtic designs and the Celtic Cross. <laughs> so we just shape it a little bit, just like so. Are we going to finish off as well? Are we going to show, should we show everybody uh, 
houses? Our our Welsh cottage. Okay. Oh, okay. But the the video hopefully it'll be ready. It'll be going up sometime soon. In terms of keeping you all updated as well on the the channel, we're going to have some videos. Um, we we we're going to be consistently putting up different ones on the the scroll saw projects for the wood carvers because I know there'll be more of you in terms of wood carving for the, for our live streams. We got one coming up, more geared towards beginners. Hopefully, it'll be useful because the idea is it'll show you how you can take really simple little carvings and turn them into products. So hopefully that'll be a useful one. What we've been doing through YouTube is to almost journey back in time of, of what we've done as a, as a family workshop. And we, we've called on a lot of the ideas that we used to use and just show you how we start off with a very simple carving and then develop it into a, a product that is unique and what's the word suitable for for actually selling let's have a quick check there you got some do you want to see an example of what you can do with dog uploaded some photos of the marine cook ah oh, brilliant yeah, definitely. With the carver, I, I'll ask them. If you could put your Instagram up there for everyone, um, we'll have a little look. Yeah, I, hopefully everybody will have a look across on your, your Instagram because you've done some beautiful work. Well worth everybody seeing the work from the carver. Some nice ideas and some great inspiration for everybody else. Check out the carver on the... Uh, on Instagram. So we're just going to shape this one here, shaping that twist just a little bit. Same with the hearts, we separate them a little. Don't want to completely separate them, but we give them a little bit of depth, just like so. Just shaping the edges and we'll round it all off. Thomas Woodcarve is in the background here, he's singing away and he's preparing for displaying the uh, the dolls' houses for the end of the live stream. So you see, I raise it in the vise. That's just so I can get to the outside edges. Other methods that we use is to use a clamp. That's another video that we've got coming up is where we, we go through specifically how we hold everything. I know yourselves, you will have a fair idea from the live streams, but we give the two methods. We share them with you for how we grip whatever we're working on. And with the twist on this design, you can see it's just a simple method of creating that effect where the carving goes over and under, over and under. Just like so. And if you're interested in the spoon carving, as we mentioned earlier in the live stream, mark out your spoons with a vertical grain. It makes it easier for your carving but it also makes it stronger. So you have that extra strength in what you're doing. A little bit more there. So we do all of our carving because we sit to carve in the one direction, turn it around and then do all of the carving in the opposite direction. Him. Are you all set up there? Just about. And we'll have to get thoughts on it because the one we just done we didn't paint, and the other one that was seen by uh, Lady Di, we did paint. It's looking good. 
I'll just finish off this carving and then we'll swing the camera around. So final thoughts on this one, Thomas Wood Carver. What was your preference? The sour wood or the dog wood? Uh, I, I, I rather like that. That's lovely, isn't it? You like the finish on that one there? Yeah, I like that. So you've got the finish on that one. Yeah. From a pure carving point of view, Both nice to work in, aren't they? They're both nice to work in, they? Yeah. yeah. But as you said, the finish is... I more morning, I prefer the other one, so, you know... That's, yeah, that's the nature of it, isn't it? Definitely. So we're just finishing off the outside edges of the hearts. And what I would also do after this, there would be some time spent sanding everything down just to get that twist on the stem, just to get it nice and smooth. Just adds another element to the carving itself. Let's have a little look. Last little bit, just like so. There we go. Three different designs carved in dogwood and sourwood from the US. Very grateful for being sent that by the carver. There you go, that's the carver's work. Beautiful work as well that you've done. So to finish off, we're just gonna share with you the, um, uh, the doll's houses. So I'm gonna swing the camera around. Let's have a little look. You swing the camera around like so. And then yeah, we just zoom it in. So that is coming up. That's what we've been working on over the last week, is making a doll's house. And that'll be... Uh, has, it, has it come up? Yeah, we're just looking there. Yeah, that's come up. Uh, you see, you see, see a photo of me setting my dad. Ah, brilliant. So we, we got all of those. Username on Instagram. MC Carvings, brilliant. So get across there everybody, have a little look. Well worth having a look at the carver's work. Thank you all again for joining us. Hopefully that was interesting, hopefully it's useful. Um, it certainly for us has been really interesting having a, a go at carving the, uh, the sour wood and the dog woods. Any questions you've got, anybody learning wood carving, remember get them into us, we do our best to uh, help you out. But thanks all again. And we'll be back again soon with another live stream and another video. All the best.